We're going to talk some about bypass filters. After we talked about the um, regeneration systems and the exhaust systems, the DPF and urea and all these kind of things, one of the things that we can seriously help with on all these trucks with the exhaust gas recirculation, the EGR systems, is the soot levels that build up in the engine oil. And Amzol makes uh, as good a bypass filtration systems as exist in the marketplace. Now we have some competition. There's Lube Refiner. They've always made bypass filters and stuff for big trucks. There's also a company called, um, they make a filter called an FS2500. And that filter filters about the same level that Amzol filters. So there's some competition out there. Now, first we'll talk about these filter systems a little bit, what we're trying to accomplish, and then I'll tell you some of the differences for why the Amzol filtration system is probably the better way to go. What I've got on the uh, screen here is Amzol's new BMK30 heavy duty bypass filter with this EABP120. Now, you guys have been around Amzol for a while, you know that we make different size bypass filters for different sump capacities on different engines. We make a EABP90, which is usually for six to eight quarts. It's for standard automobiles, uh, light trucks, works fine. Then we make a 100, EABP100, which will go up to about 14 quarts, and it operates in the range of these heavy duty turbocharged diesels. Then we make a 110. A 110 goes up to about, uh, oh, maybe, 18 to 20 quarts in a system like that. So a 90, 100, and a 110 has been our benchmark filters for years. Now this new one is a 120, and it's even a bigger filter designed around this heavy duty bypass system that you can run on a pretty good sized truck with let's say maybe six gallon uh, capacity, maybe even uh, seven or eight gallons, okay? Now, when you get bigger than that, there's a system called a dual guard system. It would be right here in our <coughs> pictures. That's all. Now, this system is what we call a dual remote. You notice 
this adapter device that would go where the oil filter normally is. It goes out and it comes back line to a full flow filter and a bypass side by side on a manifold. Now that's a very popular system for things like power strokes, Cummins turbo diesels, and uh, Duramax diesels, the original 6.5s, all the different diesel pickups. It's a very popular uh, design system right here. Now this is the original single bypass, we call it. And that system, what it's designed to do is go on anything. You just have to find a high pressure point and a return place for oil to go through that. That filter up here in the top has what you call a restrictor or an orifice, which limits the oil flow through that filter to an amount that is allowed by the original equipment manufacturer. They will specify how much oil can go through because these filters, that filter would be considered a parasitic filter, meaning that the oil that goes through that filter never goes through the engine. It goes through that filter and returns to the oil sump, either through a, they have what they call a threaded hollow bolt that can go into the, to the sump. Most popular place to bring that back is through a swivel fitting that goes through the oil filler cap. So oil that goes through a bypass filter means it bypassing the engine. That's what that means. So you have to limit the amount that bypasses the engine. Now, this system is just like this one, but much bigger. And the hoses that connect that one are gonna connect to, like I said, a porting system on the engine and it's gonna do the whole 10 gallons. Now the way most of these work is the flow rates would end up with doing the, the sump that they're attached to somewhere in a 10 minute time frame. In other words, if you were doing 50 miles an hour driving down the road, this filter on a car would do six quarts, would go through it every 10 minutes, okay? Now you say to yourself, how can that possibly clean the engine up? Well, it can't because the contaminants are not being produced at a fast enough rate that going through that very dense, efficient filter every 10 minutes, it's gonna clean it up, it'll do it well. Now in this system, everything that goes out and goes through these two filters comes back through here. So the oil that goes through the so-called bypass filter actually goes through the engine. Because it's gonna, the oil divides up in this manifold. There's a spring-loaded system in here that forces some oil to go through this filter, otherwise it just short circuit through this one. So these two actually participate side by side in oil flow coming through them, then they come back through the line back to the engine and go through the engine. Filters are rated at about 2.1 microns absolute, and that, that is a tremendous filtration route for what, uh, I mean rate, for what is called absolute. That's, uh, you can't get any better than that. Now, uh, that's at 2.1 microns. They'll do down uh, to one micron and below at what's called nominal, which is 50% efficiency. So soot usually ranges from three to five microns. That would be the average size of soot. There is some soot that's down in that tenth micron level. Never going to get that stuff, but you don't need to worry about it. It's so small it can't hurt anything. Three to five microns is getting up to the size. The, there was a report from the Society of Automotive Engineers a few years back that the particles between uh, five and 20 microns cause 80% of the wear in an engine over its life. And the best efficient full flow filters are tw about 20 microns. So you can't go any more dense than that without restricting flow so much in a standard filter that you won't get enough flow to the engine components. So when you put a bypass filter on, even a gasoline engine, what you're saying is, I'm going to make this oil so clean, it will never have any abrasive quality to it at all, and my engine will run year after year with virtually no, what we call erosion wear, which is from the uh, particles actually sandblasting, if you will, the metal surfaces. So these bypass filters are 
they've always had a value for anything that you wanted to keep long term. But when you're starting to talk about soot levels in these new diesels running at levels that we've never seen before, uh, these bypass filters are just, if not mandatory, they're at least highly encouraged because you buy a truck that's got a good modern diesel engine in it. You got about, uh, oh, in the neighborhood of uh, fifteen to eighteen thousand dollars invested in, in a high performance diesel engine. And to put a three hundred dollar bypass system on it to prevent the detrimental effects of soot, it, it's, it's, it's just the straightforward decision. Now, years ago, uh, we could have said before EGR, okay, well, if you change your good full flow filters and change oil on time and so forth, you'll never have soot levels above 1 or 2 percent. Don't worry about it. And if you ever see them above 1 or 2 percent, something's wrong with your injectors, you need to get your truck tuned up. Today, you can do most of these new trucks and check them, and if you manage to be below 4 percent, it would be unusual for your total dissolved uh, solids, including soot. So, it's a different situation. It's advisable for you to advise your customers that have diesel pickups and diesel trucks that it's a good thing to do, especially early on. Go ahead and get the thing set up, change the filters on time, keep clean oil as you can, and then run diesel concentrate because diesel concentrate is proven to have a more efficient burn, keep the injectors clean. The big thing with injectors, just on that for just a second, is that injectors need to have a nice 360 degree puff of diesel, not squirting streams out in, in a couple of directions because they're dirty on the tip. Anytime you see liquid diesel, liquid diesel, that's not what we call atomized, puff as a spray, <clears throat> that's when you're gonna see soot levels climbing because that diesel's not gonna burn. It's gonna partially burn, and what doesn't burn becomes soot. Just like you go out and you burn in a fire and you throw pine wood on and it's just blazing, right? You see very little smoke. Then you throw on a couple of heavy pieces of oak or log or something, you see the smoke start building up, you know? Well, that's because it doesn't burn as efficiently. So what you want the diesel to do is burn real efficient and not produce a bunch of soot and smoke. And the diesel concentrate, now, Honestly, you can find other diesel additives. I mean, you can go to Stanodyne, different kind of places. Nobody's arguing that. But the diesel concentrate for Amazon is a high quality product. Find somebody's product and run it because you need the most efficient burn you can get to reduce the soot levels and to reduce the regeneration requirements on the trucks that are smart enough to use a differential pressure rather than just set the time. Now, if your truck's running real clean, and you don't think it needs a regeneration, maybe you can find out from the manufacturer there's some way to reset the regeneration and not run it as often and see if it still does. See, you'll know if your DPF needs to be cleaned out. The truck will not be able to reach the uh, higher RPMs that it should because you can't force the exhaust to the, uh, and you'll see the EGR, I mean the um, EGTs, exhaust gas temperatures, which are monitored on a diesel those starting to elevate because the exhaust is not able to cleanly go out through the DPF and the temperatures start building up all the way back up to the engine on the exhaust pipe. So, all I can say is these filters are there, they're excellent for these trucks, and we need to get back into making sure that people know about these filters and talking about them because uh, <coughs> it's big business. I will tell you, the one place that we went to had uh, 350 buses, and uh, doesn't look like it'd make any headway on oil because they get it through a nice contract for unbelievably low, I think, unless it give it to them, okay? But anyway, uh, they're scurrying right now, and they got these filters under consideration. I'm gonna tell you why, and this is what we'll wrap up with. What's the difference between these filters and an FS2500? Let me give it to you really straight. They both do about 2.1 microns, FS2500 filter is about this big in a can. It's an element that goes down in the can. It looks like almost like a ball of wound cord. That's exactly what it looks like. Okay. 
good filter. Because down in that can, that can holds, depending on the size of the filter, a gallon of oil. <coughs> Change that filter oil on every 10,000 miles by their recommendation. Every 10,000 miles that filter comes out, you put another one in and add a gallon of oil to make up for it. These filters will go 30,000 miles on almost any application. Go three times as long. The FS2500 filter costs about the same as one of these, the other one. So what you're talking about is using three gallons of oil instead of maybe a half a gallon and using three elements in the same period of time. You gotta pay somebody to take it apart, put the thing in, dispose of those, put another one in. There's no comparison in the cost, in the life cycle cost of the two filter systems. There's just no comparison. So if you're talking to anybody who's looking at these filters, yeah, that FS2500 does a great job. Are you aware of how much it will cost you over time to use it versus Sam's old filter? Now, Lubrifiner is closer to us, but they're a pretty expensive filter system. They've been around a long time. So if you run into those, you might not be able to compete in that area. But I'm telling you, and the FS2500 guys will try to tell the owner that they filter better than us. They don't. They don't. They, and they, they just blow in smoke. But they're large elements. They take a lot of oil to make the changes and they recommend changing them every 10,000 miles. So that is just pure price comparison. Okay, and that's what we're into right now. It's turned out that the guys that have the 350 buses, they're using FS 2500s and they've discovered that that's an expensive proposition. Now they've got to determine whether they can justify buying whole new units to take these off because of their life cycle cost. So just, uh, Oh, one other thing on filters, let me tell you a quick, quick story. One of these wrecking guys, wrecker trucks, guy told me he's got what they call a, a, a big cam 400 Cummins engine. I don't know what all that means, but anyway, pretty impressive. And uh, we're talking about filters. Well, you know how we are AMSO guys. I'm thinking, these new AMSO heavy duty truck filters are really great filters. They're like the ELF Donaldson, but they might be a little pricey. I don't know how the, how the fellow's gonna respond. So I told him what his price was going to be on the filter. And he said, what was that? I thought, uh-oh. <laughs> he didn't like that number. He says, are you sure? I said, yeah. He says, man, Napa charged me $63 for that filter just the other day. And we were about $20 less. And I thought to myself, why do I always assume that we're going to cost more than the other guy? It's just not true. And the filter he bought was a 10,000 mile filter. The filter I'm selling him is a 30,000 mile filter. So he can get three times the length for two thirds the cost. You know, we're really competitive. We gotta just hold our ground and where we can compete, we can compete. And then it's good stuff. So that's it for filters.